What's going on guys and welcome to Po Boys. And in this video, the Tundra is going to get some mods that have been needing to happen for a long time. And if you have a truck that's got miles and it's getting up there, you should probably do these mods too. On top of some cool stuff that you probably didn't know even existed. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the mods that you should put on your Tundra. And of course we're working on the V8 one, the best one. So let's get started and hop into the video. Nature said that she's gonna rain today, and by the way, thank you for let, Gavin letting us use his truck. It's just a six YouTube channel.com. Go get your entries to win some cool vehicles, including this one right here. But thank you very much to Gavin for letting me use his shop. Let's go ahead and get started into the list of things that we need to do on the truck. The first thing that Tundras have an issue with every single Tundra, you've probably had it before if you've owned a Tundra, is brakes. These things warp like crazy. So that is when R1 Concepts is going to step in and help us out. Let's go ahead and unpack these carbon alloy brakes with their performance off-road and tow series brake pads as well. They also provide you new hardware inside the brake calipers to use as well. So with everything there, all we need is some brake grease to grease up these pins right here, and then we will be ready for a full job. So as far as brake goes, that is R1 Concepts going to hit us up with four full brake rotors all the way around the truck so we can have no more issues because this is what I was dealing with before. When I press the brakes, not only does the pedal move, the steering wheel also moves back and forth too. And when I stop, it doesn't come to a clean stop. It's really hard because the brakes are warped. So we're gonna fix that. Second up, the wheels are disgusting. So White Diamond has been hooking me up with stuff to keep my vehicles clean for the longest amount of time. And I'm gonna test out the tire shine, the quick detail, and the speed shield. The speed shield is a new product that he's got. And this is a hydrophobic product that basically you can spray on anything that you want and it makes water repel off of it. So you can spray your shoes with this and it makes water repel to it. It's kind of like Rain-X for anything. And the last mod is under this box. You guys are going to have to wait just a little bit. You probably have seen what's in the title, but you're gonna have to wait just a little bit before you can see it. We're gonna have to go ahead and get started on these brakes before I spoil the big surprise what's inside of there. You'll see here soon. Ooh. All right, let's go and start on the brake. Guys, so if you see these Mythin wheels that Custom Offset set over, they're kind of dirty, they're kind of crusty. And uh, to say the least, they're a little musty. So let's go ahead and grab this white diamond quick detail and just get a good spray. Just a good spray on them wheels. Clean these things off, get them back to stock condition. As you can see, look how good that's doing. You can see the outside of the wheel looks 10 times better than the inside of the wheel. All right, that is more like it. So we got these things cleaned up and we're gonna go ahead and take them off now. Now that we have it all cleaned up and get started on the removal of the brakes. Once you get everything off the truck, you're gonna go ahead and see the brake caliper. So now what you gotta do is pull these pins out, which are pretty simple and easy, and then pull off these two bolts right here, which we have videos online of people showing us how to do that if you wanna see it. There's tons of people that show you how to do it, but it's kind of boring, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the old worked rotor. We're gonna go ahead and pull this thing off and get the R1 Concepts one on there so we don't have any more issues. But there is one thing you gotta check before you put the new rotors on every time you do a brake job. Let me show you what that is. This surface can get stuff up underneath it, so every time you change these out, change out these wheel bearings or clean out the wheel bearing surface that the brake mounts to. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a brush and start cleaning. Moment of truth, and make sure you have your direction specific. If you look at the top of them, these fins will always point up and back. It's always taking the air away from the rotor from the inside. So as it spins, that air gets slung out of the rotor. So let's go ahead and install. Oh my gosh. So now 
now we're gonna check out these R1 Concepts Performance Off-Road and Toe Series brake pads. So let's go ahead and crack these things open. And four pads, because obviously these are the fronts. One with a squealer, two with squealers, one on each set. So we got the rotor pads and the wheel spacer on there. The only reason I run the wheel spacer is so I can clear the 37s properly because you gotta have a lot of space to clear them 37s. I need this little wheel spacer right there. But we've got these brake pads in there and now it's time to put the hardware in place. So we have this grease right here. We're gonna grease up these pins real quick and I'll go ahead and put these in place. All right, the brakes finished on the truck. Just like that, pins in, brakes in. We should have normal warp rotors on these things. And I will say, the bedding process, do not slam on these things nor overheat them. They don't want to do that. That's what warps them in the first place. So that's not how you warm them up. They literally say to lightly press on the brakes and to lightly use the brakes. Try to actually avoid hard brakes in general. That's going to keep these things from warping again. So if you keep having warped brakes and you keep bedding your brakes like that and they keep warping, learn the lesson. Maybe that's why it's happening. Break them in gently because that's what they're designed to do. Look on R1 Concepts website and they'll show you that that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Man, these wheels look freaking amazing. You just cannot lie. A method wheel looks 10 times better than anything. That bugs me, I gotta straighten that out. I don't know how that got crooked, but I gotta straighten that. Oh, this one looks good. <laughs> Check this one out. This one looks awesome. That's a wheel right there. Oh my gosh. Plus some brakes on top of it. These things look amazing. Let's go check the other side. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. These are the R1 Concepts brakes and rotors on the Tundra. These pads should do us really good, stop really well. On top of these rotors should keep us balanced and no more freaking wobbling of the stock rotors. These things look terrible. So with that being said, the fronts are now finished. Let's go ahead and start installing on the rears. The rears are super simple to do. Right now I'm using a spreader tool so I can spread this piston back to its open form so I can accept a new pad. But that is super simple to do. This part you can rent from a parts store. It's just a brake piston caliper spreader tool and it'll bottom out right there. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up. Now I can put the new pads on where these pads were as well as the new rotor. So I already pulled these two pins out and that's how the caliper came off in the first place. Now we can pull out these pads. There's one and there's two. All right guys, so that is the conclusion of the brakes on the truck. And first off, the wheels look amazing, but let me show you these rears. Those things look amazing inside of there. Those brake rotors, you can see them fresh and brand new, all rebuilt, ready to go. There's the rotor, everything's good, tight and in place. Fresh TRD sway bar, obviously. You had to wipe that thing down because it was looking a little bit crusty, so I had to make it look good again. But let's look at these rotors from the front side. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Man, that's one of the happiest mods I think I have coming, but honestly, it's a hard decision between this one and the next one that we're about to throw in. And let me go ahead and show you guys what it is because it's been long enough. You've watched the brake stuff, it's time. Carbon fiber Alcantara, forged carbon that is, steering wheel, that not only is just amazing, it's heated too and it hooks up to the stock controls for the Tundra. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install this steering wheel because this is going to be a game changer for the truck. And it even comes with a clock spring to add everything in there. It'll be a complete OEM install and my truck doesn't already have a heated steering wheel. So I guess I'll show you how to add that to the truck with this steering wheel kit that you can get from cartrimhome.com. And they sent this wheel out to me so I can show you guys the wheel as well as show you guys how to install it. Let's throw this beautiful steering wheel inside the truck and get rid of the crusty, the dusty, and the old stock steering wheel. So this stock steering wheel is obviously ugly and has a hole in it. This truck's got 260,000 miles on it, so we obviously have to do something to refresh this. This needs to go. And since we have the new one going on, let me show you how to pull it off. 
So on each side of the steering wheel, there's going to be a panel that you can pop off. I pre-did these before I started filming, so you'll have to use a little trim panel to pop it out, but it just comes out just like you saw there. And then you'll grab this piece right here with a T30. And there is a T30 female side bolt right there. And you're gonna pull that out. So I disconnected the negative battery lead over there. So we have nothing connected on the battery. All right, so one side's out. Now we can go to the other side. All right, so now those bolts are loosened. Our airbag should pop right out. And there's a few connections on the back side that I have to unplug real quick. There's these ones right here, which we grab a flathead and then pop those little pins out. And then there is a ground clamp at the end. All right, now the airbag is completely disconnected from the steering wheel. So now we put this in a safe place, probably on a car battery. Just joking, put it somewhere where it's not going to get exploded somewhere. Now we've got the steering wheel apart here. So we're gonna take this bolt right here, as you can see, and we're gonna take that bolt out. There's a nut for that. Then there's some plugs that we have to disconnect up here. And that is the clock spring is going to be the last thing we leave attached. And then everything else can come off the steering wheel itself as it comes right here. So you grab this, this is a steering wheel puller. All right, now that we use the steering wheel puller, we can pull the steering wheel. And just like that, the whole steering wheel is off the truck. Old one's off, let's go ahead and switch over some stuff. So we also need to change out this clock spring right here because since we're adding an extra control, this clock spring is basically what lets you turn the steering wheel. It lets you spin it around, but also lets you make the connections. This truck's been having a problem. The horn only worked whenever the wheel was caught to the side. So changing this out is gonna be a double-edged sword because we're gonna fix the horn problem as well as add the steering, which is an extra lead on the clock spring as well. So Car Trim Home provides you the extra clock spring. And there it is, there's the entire clock spring unit. All right, guys, so we're gonna move over to this side of the table and we're gonna have to take this, this steering position sensor right here and we're gonna have to swap that over to the new clock spring. All right, so there's a bunch of tabs that you gotta pull out and I went ahead and popped them all off and now I'm gonna go ahead and swap this to the new unit, just like so. And there's some locating pins that it's gotta connect. And now that is in place. Transferred over and on the new clock spring. So now we gotta take this new clock spring and put this back in place where the old one was real quick. So that'll go just like how the other one was. And it just clicks in place. And now you leave this exactly where it's at and you do not touch it. So now that the clock springs in, let's go ahead and do the last of the dirty work before we get to the fun work because the fun work's always fun to do last because it looks the best. So this is now the added extra fuse we have as well as the extra switch that Car Trim Home provides that will fit into stock locations. I'm gonna go ahead and put it here right next to my window roll down because this is my light bar button. I don't have a light bar button there, it's here now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out and we're gonna put this one in place for where the other one was. So first step, let's go ahead and take this switch and pop it in place. Wow, that's like stock. Heated steering wheel, just like that. So now I got a heated steering wheel button right there whenever I want it. I love that. And now we'll go ahead and hook up the harness. And then that is going to be connected to right here is the wiring harness on the back side of that. And that runs down on this side. And as you can see right here, there is a big ground connection that this right here is gonna to connect to that ground connection right there. And then this is going to be an add a fuse for this fuse box right there to heat ignition. And then our heated steering wheel should work. Now what we can do is we can take this extra plug right here. This is not on the stock Tundra clock springs, but since we're adding the extra steering, this is the extra connection that we make. Now we have a heated steering wheel. And let's go ahead and plug in everything else while we're here. That's plugged and that's plugged. So now the steering wheel is completely plugged in. All we gotta do now is install this lower bezel. All right, I've got the new clock spring installed and all the trim back in place how, it's, how it needs to be and ready to install the new steering wheel. So let's go ahead and get the steering wheel switched over. And just to show you again, this thing's so beautiful. It's worth all the time and work compared to this, this ugly, Ugliness. So now we gotta pull these switches off and that's just a few Phillips screws. I can pull off all these screws real quick. I'm gonna do that. You guys ready for it? This is the stock steering wheel and I've pulled all the guts out of it and we've transferred it over. This looks freaking gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what to think, but it's time to take it to the truck. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. 
All right, guys, and up last but not least is the Last Fit Floor Liners. This company sent me out these floor liners to try out, and I'm gonna go ahead and give them a first try. Let's go ahead and open them up and see what these things are all about. They're weatherproof and fit directly to your vehicle. These ones are obviously made for a 2014 Tundra. This is the rear seats. They're actually pretty nice quality. They're nice rubber. And then looks like here are the fronts. So this is gonna be the driver's side because it has these little pins right here. So let's take it to the driver's side. Oh yeah. This is gonna be nice not having these little Tundra Limited ones in there. Line these guys up, twist it to lock it in place. So now that floor mat is inside of there and let's get the rest of them in. All right, passenger side floor mat installed. Wow, that actually came out really well too. Okay, sick. And we'll get the rear mat right here. And guys, these things are honestly pretty good quality. So I'm not worried about these ones anymore. These obviously can't stain and these will be a lot easier to clean. So if you wanna get these last fit liners yourself, go ahead and use my code in the description. I have an affiliate link that you can click on to use these for yourself if you would like to get some for a discounted price. And as you can tell, it's actually kind of like a really satisfying fit right there. These things fit right into place and honestly do pretty solid. I like it a lot. Sweet floor mats in this thing steering wheel in this thing it's like a brand new truck again but we're not even done we got some more stuff yo 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 we got a package and i know this package is from car trim home i'm gonna open this off camera because i only have one hand so we're about to open this together and figure out what i got sent from car trim home because i asked for a few extra accessories and he's like oh shoot i'll get you some extra accessories let's see it oh <laughs> oh, so we've got a charger for the center of the truck. This is door panel. Oh, 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 oh my gosh, so many pieces in carbon. This piece is just inside of a bag. I don't even know what that is. Ah, yo. Guys, guys, oh my goodness. So Car Trim Home really freaking hooked it up. If you have a freaking Toyota product or just a car that they have products for on their website, check and see if they make something for your car because if they do, I guarantee you it's awesome. This is a whole entire carbon fiber piece for where the center console and shifter sit. So that is exciting for the first one. Second off, a wireless charger for the phone for the center console. Second very exciting part, Third one, more carbon fiber pieces, door pieces, window pieces. This is for the little window switch and it's also gonna sit around the new heated steering wheel button that we put in and then steering wheel controls and then some for the rear speakers as well. Let's go ahead and throw all this beautiful carbon stuff in the truck. Thank you, Car Trim Home, this stuff's gorgeous. All of it has pre-installed double-sided tape. So I'm super excited about that. fiber center console piece inside here and it looks freaking amazing i'll show you some more pictures here in just a second but one thing i did have to get before this was gone is this right here is not a charger yet because the charger piece we have not installed yet we'll have to take this whole piece apart and then we'll be able to get this in there so we'll have a wireless charger right here we could just set the phone down and have it charging so we need to pull this up and we need to take off every single screw holding this panel on then there's these few bolts right here that we got to pull off the old piece slides out and then the new piece just slides right in where the old piece was. So now we just put the screws back in. And then this right here will be snaked down in this area like so. So now I've got this whole entire piece bolted back on and this is the plug that I just ran down here for this hinge. So we can close that and go to the back side. All you have to do is push this piece that direction and it falls off that way. And we're gonna take this harness and plug and play it. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing. And this harness is super simple. We're gonna take this plug and play 
and quite literally do a plug and a play. And the wiring harness is all connected like that. And that harness is connected right there. So we can put these pins back in. All right, guys, so here it is in its glory. The truck in its current form, not done yet, but this video is going to be it. So remember, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Let's go ahead and show you the last, how beautiful this truck is. The steering wheel just looks immaculate in there. On top of the carbon fiber trim, everywhere just looks great. If anyone has a Tundra that has black leather right here and wants to trade me out, I would love to on top of this piece as well. I wanna get these black and then also the little gray color that they have instead of the mahogany and this tan. On top of the center console too. But goodness gracious guys, this center console looks freaking amazing. Everything about this truck is so much better. The steering wheel is the cherry on top of it all. Then we got the charger on top of the steering wheel controls. We got that hooked up too. So now we have steering wheel controls. I just added it to the cigarette lighter fuse and we're good to go. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. Have a great one. Remember to freaking send it. And by the way, since you're at the end of the video, go check out it's just a six .com. Use code POE and you get 10% off any of your orders that you use on the website. So go get your discount and go check out the website. See if there's anything there you like.